Hello, and welcome to another episode of St. Jude and Five-ish. Day in and day out, our caregivers provide life-saving, life-changing care to our patients and their loved ones. And sometimes the result of providing that care can be compassion fatigue, which has been described as the cost of caring for others in emotional and physical pain. It is often characterized by deep physical, emotional, and spiritual exhaustion, and a pronounced change in a caregiver's ability to feel empathy. And sometimes caregivers need to be on the receiving end of the care they give so freely. We are very fortunate to welcome Mark Jablonski, Chief Mission Officer for St. Jude Medical Center, to discuss this very important topic. Mark has been with St. Jude for over 30 years in varying roles and has seen and heard some of the sensitive situations that caregivers are faced with in their day-to-day -day work. Mark, I understand that St. Jude is introducing a new program for um, caregivers that are struggling with compassion fatigue. Um, and I believe it's called Condition C? Correct, like, Heather. Yes, thank you. Um, yes, St. Jude recently introduced a program that we're calling Condition C, which stands for Condition Compassion, in response to the reality that many of our caregivers experience on a day-to-day -day basis uh, events that could trigger an emotional or moral distress situation. Could be a difficult patient or the loss of a patient who passes away uh, during their t uh, time that they're serving. It could be a a difficult family member that they're dealing with in terms of uh, confronting them and causing them to distress, or it might be their own personal life where they find a, a person in their family has passed away or something happens. All of these create the possibility for emotional and moral distress. And Condition C is basically a response, a coordinated response from the medical center to support that caregiver at that time and then could continue to follow up with that caregiver to ensure that they get the support that they need from us as, a facility, as an organization. And so what kind of resources are specifically available? We have a number of resources internal that, to the organization that are somewhat unique to the medical center environment. Uh, obviously, we have chaplains who are part of our spiritual care team, and we have social workers who are part of our care management or, uh, t department. We also have uh, Sisters of St. Joseph who serve uh, the organization, and we have mission integration uh, staff like myself. And those individuals have skill sets in terms of counseling and support, and they provide unique uh, opportunities to support the caregivers during those situations. And why do you think that offering those services is important? I think it's important because, again, um, our mission calls us to, uh, to support the uh, to care for the poor and vulnerable. And when that individual uh, is experiencing that traumatic event, unfortunately, one of, those, one of the things that they feel is they, that sense of being alone and needing to, just wanting to know who's, who's there for them. Now, again, because of the type of environment that we are, much, oftentimes that support comes through the manager or their, their peers. But oftentimes we also recognize that it doesn't get coordinated and it could be a hit and miss uh, opportunity where a coworker asks them, how are you doing? And then that's the end of the process when days later that an individual is still struggling with the situation. So the condition C follows up with the caregivers and it doesn't just stop at the event itself, but it makes sure that we have a coordination in terms of our response to come back to the caregiver days, weeks, and sometimes even months later to say, how are things going? Um, are there other things that we can do to support you? So that they know that that care for them is, is not just momentary, but rather it's an ongoing commitment. And so how does that process work? So if I wanted to call a condition C as a leader or as a caregiver, um, for one of my colleagues, what would I do? It's actually very simple. So we've used the service center because of the fact that they are staffed 24-7 as opposed to putting it to an individual and them having to remember cell phone numbers or emails or anything like that. So all the caregiver um, or the manager needs to do is dial 7777 um, and then they'll be asked a couple of questions as far as the intake process to identify where who the person is obviously maybe a little bit about can you tell us what happened in terms of the situation and then that information gets relayed to a coordinator whether it's um, during the work days we have a specific individual who's identified as a coordinator and after hours that's uh, done by the ARN administrative resource nurse um, and that in in individual will follow up with the individual on an immediate basis to find out what can we do and what support might we be able to offer. So it's not a patented, same um, size, uh, fits all type of pro process, but rather based on the individual situation. So if a caregiver has lost a, um, has just had a family, uh, had a patient die on them, 
they might need to talk to a chaplain or a spiritual care person. If the individual is struggling with something that they found out that there's a problem with uh, their benefits that's causing them to, to concern because a caregiver was, wasn't able to access the care they needed, uh, or a member of their family, that is, um, then it might be actually coordinated with HR. So it depends on the situation, and the response is tailored for that particular situation. What kind of a time frame can they expect to receive some sort of call? Or... Great, great question. And the answer is within 24 hours, and actually our goal is within the same shift. We don't want the individual leaving the hospital uh, having not had that type of emotional response. So we, what we try to do is within the same shift, as basically like any kind of a code situation, as soon as, as soon as possible to get the resources up there. The contact with them will definitely be within the same shift. Um, and if, if we have to coordinate it on a weekend, it might take a, you know, a 24-hour period to actually get those resources to them. But the response to the caregiver is immediate at that point in time. Such a great example of our family caring for your family and really sort of demonstrates the culture at St. Jude. Yes, absolutely. <clears throat> and I think, again, that's one of the things why I've always uh, really valued the St. Jude as, the, as, a, as a ministry because it's not just, uh, oh, you're an employee, but rather you're a caregiver and we really truly want to support you mm -hmm. in all your situations. Studies show that at any given time, one out of three individuals is experiencing something uh, in terms of their personal life or their, on an emotional basis that impacts their ability to, to focus on work. And again, this is just a uh, pr process that recognizes that reality and says, we're here to support you. Well, thank you so much for spearheading that. Um, now is the part of the segment where we have a little bit of fun and we get to know you a little more personally. Okay. Do I need to be worried? So, um, no, not worried. I wouldn't say worried. Okay. <laughs> um, and so um, we're just, I'm just going to spit fire some questions. There's only three questions, okay. so it's not hard. I'm ready. And then just say to me the first thing that comes, you know, off the top of your, your okay. head as quickly as you can. Got so it. number one, what's the first con concert you attended? Uh, Chicago. Nice. What city was it in? It was in Chicago. I grew up in <laughs> Chicago. And so back then they were actually known as Chicago Transit Authority. Nice. Yeah. A professional with Chicago, That's huh? Right. <laughs> if you could win an Olympic medal for any sport, real or fake, what would it be? Oh, that'd be swimming. Swimming. So I, I'm a, I, I love to swim and that would just be a, awesome. Uh, awesome. Yeah. Um, and then what is your hidden talent? Oh, wow. Um, hidden talent. Um, I'm actually a good cook. I don't, know, I don't know if how hidden it is because I'm the primary cook in our house and uh, uh, I love to cook and I love to entertain. So uh, I don't know if that's hidden. Um, I would say that it is. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Do I don't, do, a, don't do it a lot at the hospital. Uh, <laughs> no. Do you have a specific meal that you're really good at? Uh, any of the big meals in terms of Thanksgiving or I do a great lasagna, even though it doesn't sound like my name is too Italian, but, yeah. uh, <laughs> but I do a good, a good lasagna as well. So. Well, you heard it here first. Mark Jablonski and his la lasagna. Um, thank you so much, Mark, for joining oh, us today. And thank you for tuning in. Um, please join us for St. Jude Night at Angel Stadium, which will be April 23rd. Um, and we look forward to seeing you next time.